Hi, this is Shady Atia, professor at Liège University in Belgium, and I'm going to talk today about effective data visualization. This is the first presentation of a series of presentations on effective data visualization, and I would like to uh, share the content here with you so that when you are developing any future graphs or tables, you can benefit from this presentation. The audience of this presentation is mainly researchers who are preparing uh, research thesis, uh, dissertation, conference papers or journal publications, and they are looking to uh, develop professional uh, visualizations. I'm going to talk about what is an effective data visualization. I'm talking about its importance, the best practices, how to create a graph or a chart, how to create a table, and then I'm going to show you uh, some uh, graphs and tables that can be useful in your uh, future work, and finally I will wrap up with a conclusion. So let's start with effective data visualization. What is effective data visualization? A beautiful graph or a chart is important because it allows you to communicate your scientific findings in a clear way. And as you know, when we do any publication or any manuscript or any uh, scientific uh, uh, production, it's not only about the science, it's also about communication. And it's very important to make sure that we are communicating in an effective way. So a good data visualization involves knowing your audience, uh, creating a suitable chart, and having a good storytelling that is after on, after going to be done through the text that is complementary with your graph. Now, what are the benefits on research when I have a good or an effective visualization? Well, I can apply it to different contexts and medium, and I can increase the readability of my work, and in this sense, I can include it in a conference paper, poster, or a graphical abstract, or a journal article, or a scientific presentation. So it's important to be able and to master uh, uh, the, the creation of good graphs and good uh, tables. Now, what are the best practices when it comes to graphs? Well, as you can see, we try always to use Arial or Times New Romans, so very classical uh, um, fonts to make sure that the text is readable and not biased. And we try to choose the right graph that corresponds to the data that we have. And it's very important that you look in the beginning when you start to investigate your result production, how I'm going to visualize it. So this is the first step to make sure and always avoid to use any font. Just use always, I advise Arial and choose the right graph. Also, you need to select the vital data. So you need to avoid the noise. You can represent the same information just by converting your data and omitting any additional noise. So this is an example for a good graph where I do not need to provide all this no noisy information. On the opposite, this graph is providing a better understanding of the profile of the time series. Well, when it comes to chart, what are the best practices? This is an example for an ideal chart. As you can see here, I have several components that makes this graph ideal. First of all, I have the chart title. The chart title is clearly mentioned. I have an axis title. This is the axis title here. This is the Y and this is the Z. I have a title for that. I have a legend. The legend is explaining my coloring. And I have data labels. The data labels are provided. I have also axis. I have grid lines that are avoided. It's always recommended to avoid grid lines. And I have a plot area for my whole work. And as you can see, I always put axis titles with the units I'm using in an appropriate way. And I have even sometimes, not in this case, I can add error bars if needed, and I can have some text captions. How can I master that? How, how can I do that? I advise you to use simply uh, software like Excel, and you go in the layout setting, and you can have all these options, chart title, axis, legend, and so on. And based on this simple software use, you can create a very professional graph you use the right, poly, the, the right font, and you can include all these elements as part of your graph drawing. In general, when you draw a graph, try to avoid having frames. This is not a good idea. Try to have, avoid having background uh, colors. It's always recommended to leave a white uh, background. And avoid major grid lines, because they, are, uh, uh, they distract you from focusing on the major uh, graph. So these are some recommendations for best practices. And also some other recommendation when it comes to drawing charts, try always to represent the data in a proportional way. As you can see on the left side here, we started to represent the data from 34%. That's not appropriate. We preferably start from zero so that we can really distinguish the difference. Because once you start to uh, chop up the data, the influence of the data, it can convey 
um, wrong information and therefore it's always uh, recommended to have a representation of data in a proportional way and dimension of your graphs should correspond to the dimension of the data. So this is the way to represent a professional graph. Well, again, you need to have a chart title, axis title, legend, data labels, axis, grid lines, plot area, error bars, and text caption. Every time you develop a graph, you need to answer this question and make sure that they are embedded in your graph. Another important part when I draw, uh, when I ha when I'm talking about uh, uh, effective graph, I need to look at the grayscale printing option. Here we are not talking about emitting anything that is colorful, but I need to make sure that my graph is black and white friendly. So I look, it looks great on screen, but when it's printed, does it look great or not? Keep in mind that many people do not have access to colored uh, printer or they cannot uh, view the document uh, in a colored, on a colored screen. So in many cases it's only available in a black and white format. So it's very important in this sense that you look at your graph colors and make sure that when they are printed in a grayscale they are black and white or grayscale friendly. Meaning that the person who will read the graph can simply able to distinguish the colors. So this is very important as an idea and this means that you need to preview your graph in grayscale and make sure if it's legible or not and as you can see I'm not against the idea of having a color in a graph but the idea is that you can have degrees of shades make sure that you can use the same color for example with through, through different degrees of shade if it's printed in grayscale you can distinguish the different information in a readable way. Also, it's important when you are looking at colors to avoid um, increasing the number of colors of a graph. In general, the best practice, practice for graphs is to keep only one color with different shade of this color. So limit the use of color in general. And as you can see, this is an example for a table. Instead of representing it in this way, you can better represent it in this way. And you need to highlight the most important information to make sure that you are having uh, effective visualization that is looking good and is not uh, disturbing uh, the reader and make them better go seek the most important information, the number one for example in this case. Well, moving now from graphs to tables, what are the best practices for tables? As you can see any table needs to have always a caption uh, on the top, so we put the tab caption on the top and as you can see we have a title we have elements of our table and we have captions and what do we do here? We avoid the lines, we allow, avoid having a lot of lines. So instead of having a very dense table with lines and border lines and internal lines all over, we try always to simpl simplify our tables to have minimal borders and we have light borders to make the table more readable. So this is also a best practice, always produce graphs according to uh, this uh, example. Now, also when you do heat maps, these are examples for heat maps, when you are presenting data in the form of a map or a diagram and you have different percentages, it's better to transform it from a table to a heat map. And as you can see, directly the readability of the heat map is higher and you can directly accentuate or uh, uh, guide the eye to the most important element uh, when it comes to a heat map, when you have a table with different information. So heat maps are very useful and you need to uh, learn about it and it's very uh, friendly to move from low to high color uh, shade. Now let's go through a new information here. I want to show you some graphs, some examples, so that from this example for a graph you can know what to do and what not to do. This is an example for a graph that you should not do. As you can see, there is a lot of mistakes in these graphs and I'm going to explain why it's not acceptable. Because when you look at this graph, you can see the difference. The same information presented here in a boring way, in an unprofessional way, the visualization is not effective. While here, it's a very professional graph, it is focused, it is precise, it's taking to my eyes to the essential. Now, how do we do or move from such a basic graph to a refined graph that is effective? As you can see, there is a lot of steps that I need to take into account. The same graphs are drawn in the same software Excel. But first of all, we removed the border. So first of all, make sure always that you remove the chart border. Secondly, you remove the grid lines because the grid lines, they are just creating noise. Then you remove the data markers. And when I talk about data markers, these blue or th these, uh, sorry, red squares 
or these uh, rhombus that are in blue. Just take them out. Then you have to refine the axis. These axes, it's unacceptable to uh, keep your uh, monthes uh, like presented in a diagonal way or in a vertical way. They need to be always horizontal. And therefore, if you make abbreviations, they are more appropriate. Never leave this x-axis untreated. The same goes with the y-axis. So refine the axis, use consistent precision. Why do I need to have 0.00? I just can have a 050 and so on. So these are all steps. So after removing the data marker, you have to refine the axis. Then you have to leverage consistent colors. As you can see, the colors here are not consistent because I have two colors and I mentioned earlier, it's always recommended to keep one color and in case you have a background information, you can make it in gray or shades of black and in this sense you can highlight the information that you want to uh, share. Also make the data stand out. How can I make the data stand out? I can directly focus on the places where I want the reader to look at by mentioning the numbers and starting to articulating with an additional text the information. So by that I can have an improved level of uh, drawing and finally I can draw the attention only to the essential. This is by having this part under the focus of the viewer. So these are the steps that I would like to share with you. When you have a graph, always make sure that you follow these se seven steps. Well, let's move to another example when it comes to tables. How can I have an ideal visual or effective visual table? This is a table that we have before we conducted any uh, refinements, for sure the information is important, but this is after. As you can see, it's much, much interesting, and the table here is directly guiding my eye to look at the most important and the most essential information. It's readable, it's effective, compared to this noisy and full of information table. Now, how can I do that? As you can see, I am comparing the table before and comparing the table after. First of all, we need to remove the color. It's always preferable to have black and white tables. Worst case scenario, if you will introduce a, gay, a shade, shade of gray, that's the maximum to do. Remove the grid lines. Always remove the grid lines. Remove the background uh, fills. But when I say remove the grid lines, don't remove everything. You just need at least to keep the line of the title. So this is important step. Always leave the line of, of, of title and then remove the other grid lines. Remove the background fills. I do not need these colors of background fills. Remove the border. Always take out the border of any table you are drawing. Remove the bolding. I do not need to have a bolding except for the essential information. But putting everything on bold or putting the title on bold, it's not necessary at all. I only put on bold the information I want the reader to uh, look at. And if there is information is equal, then there is no bolding. Also, left align the text. You need to left align the text and not position it in a central way. Right align the numbers. We always left align the text, right align the numbers to the right, as you can see, right column numbers, left the text. Align the titles with the data. The titles need to be corresponding with the data so that they are readable in a logical way. Put white space to the work, introduce the white, Use consistent precision when it comes to number. It's meaningless to come to have a precision point 000. This is meaningless. Just use precise number and uh, uh, make sure that the information is uh, simple. Round the numbers. Remove repetition. There is no need to repeat in a table. And finally, highlight the emphasis. That's a professional table. That's a professional and effective table that you are looking at. You are trying to make it all consistent and you are just allowing the reader to focus on one part that is most important. So this is a professional graph, uh, sorry, this is a professional table when it comes to drawing a table. By that I would like to end up my presentation and I share with you some conclusion. An effective data visualization helps you to improve the communication of scientific findings. It helps you to increase the awareness about your research results by both experts and non-experts and it can have a greater impact and reach of science. So it's very important to invest in your visualizations and there is a lot of software to work on that. At least you can start today with Excel and later on you can invest in more complicated softwares. By that I would like to invite you to subscribe to the channel and like the video if you are interested and otherwise I would like to thank you with the first presentation on effective data visualization. Thank you very much for your attention and have a good day.